In this video, I'm going to share with you how to get stock prices in Google Sheets. I'm going to show you two different methods that you can use to get real time and historical stock price data that you can use separately or together, depending on your specific needs. And if you stay until the end, I'm going to show you how to get other types of stock data on your Google Sheets spreadsheet, such as dividends, financials, key metrics, and more. Okay, so the best way to get stock prices in Google Sheets is to use the built in Google Finance function. This function is very simple to use. As you can see here, I have an example, but I just want to show you from scratch what that looks like. So all you have to do is enter equals and then Google Finance, and you will see that this is automatically built into Google Sheets. So you don't have to install anything. And then after that, it will tell you the instructions of the function, which are very simple. You will enter the ticker and then the attribute. And that is the case for real time data, but I'm also gonna show you how to get historical stock prices in Google Sheets in a second. So first, the ticker. Here, we're gonna enter Apple and then the attribute. One of the simplest attributes that you can enter is price. So you enter all this information in quotes, close the bracket, and as you can see, you will get the real time price data for Apple and it will automatically update every so often. The thing that you do have to keep in mind is that the quotes can be delayed as it, can, as it says here for up to 20 minutes. So there's two questions that come to mind when doing this method. The first is how do you know what the ticker is for particular companies? And also what attributes are available that you can get for real time um, stock information? So I'm gonna answer both of those questions very simply. If you wanna find the ticker of a particular company, remember the Google Finance function gets the data from Google Finance itself. So something you can do is to just Google the company name, followed by the word stock, like, a, like you can see right now. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna return this window and this comes from Google Finance. And then right here, you will be able to see what the ticker is. So in this case, the ticker is Apple, but you can also enter the extension so that if you're looking to get data for international stock exchanges, you copy the entire thing Put it in the function, but just remove the extra spacing. And as you can see, you will be able to get the same data, but this will enable you to also get real time stock prices uh, for international stocks as well. The other question that I mentioned is how do you know what attributes or what data is available? And you can see from this page on Google, they list all the different attributes that are available for the function. So instead of price, like I did before, you could do price open, high, low, volume, market cap, etc. So these are all very valuable attributes that you can access through the function as well. Something else to keep in mind when getting stock prices in Google Sheets is the following. You do not necessarily have to enter the ticker and the attribute right in the function as you can see right now. What you can also do, which is very powerful, especially when you're looking to build your own analysis model. So if you want to build a stock watch list or stock tracker and, or anything like that, this is one of the best things you can do. So instead of entering this text, what you could do is just reference a cell that has exactly the information you're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for the ticker. I can click here to hide this. And now the ticker is gonna be Apple, but now I'm referencing the cell instead of actually hard coding the value into the function. And then I can do the same for price. So I'm gonna enter this. And as you can see, you will get the same result. The difference is that now this is dynamic. So if I change the ticker to Microsoft, the data will automatically update and I can also change the attribute as well. The second method for getting stock prices in Google Sheets is by using Y Sheets. So Y Sheets is a Google Sheets add-on that you can install on your Google Sheets spreadsheet. And once you install it and log in with your account, what you will have is access to this Y's price function. So all you have to do is enter Y's price. And this function is very similar to the Google Finance, but the reason why I'm showing you this method is because 
Y Sheets actually covers other data that Google Finance does not cover. So it covers real-time stock price data, it covers historical stock price data, and it covers a lot of other really valuable stuff like dividend data, segmented revenues, financials, key metrics, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm also gonna show you how you can access some of that data in the later part of the video. So the way the function works is very simple. Uh, you can see here the syntax of the function and you can also have a look at it here. So in this case, you can enter a symbol or multiple symbols. So that's very similar to Google Finance. And then instead of attribute, we just, uh, it's just called parameters. Now, the one key thing that you do need to know is that for the symbols, we do not use the same system as Google Finance, but we do use the same ticker system as Yahoo Finance. So something you can do is go in Yahoo Finance, look for the company, and you will also see the ticker. Or in the statement dump search, you can enter a company. So for example, I'd say we want Telus, which is a Canadian company. And as you can see, this is Telus Corporation, and this is listed in the TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange. And this is the ticker that we would use inside the function. That being said, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a really cool thing about the function is that you can select multiple tickers at once. And you can also select multiple parameters. So close this, select this parameters. So instead of getting this data one by one, you can get it all at once. And as you can imagine, if this list was a lot longer, you would be able to do that as well. So as you can see, you get the data. I'm just formatting the data here uh, because the numbers are quite big, as you can imagine, for these companies. But the best part is that you have control of when this data is refreshed. So anytime you want to refresh the data, you just press here on this button. And as you can see, the data will automatically refresh for you. When it comes to what parameters are available for the wise price function for real time data, you can see all of them here. So some of them are similar, some of them are different and more unique. This is why it is a good idea to use the two of them in combination, although technically you can get all the data you want using just Y sheets. Now I'm going to show you how it is that you can get historical stock prices in Google Sheets. So this is very simple. Everything that I show you about the Google Finance function before uh, applies in this case. So the same thing about the ticker, except the attribute for the historical attributes you can also visit the same website that i showed you before and that's going to be listed in the description to see what attributes are available for this function so in this case i'm going to enter apple the attribute that i'm going to use is the close which is the close price and then here what it's going to ask you for historical price data is the start date and the end date so in this case i'm going to uh, enter this as the start date and this is going to be the end date you do have to make sure that these numbers are formatted in the date format and that is very simple you can just go here enter them what i usually do is for example here i would just do january 1st 2022 and then that will if you select date that will automatically turn into that format and as you can see the function will return the data Keep in mind, it won't show all the dates because uh, between these two dates, there's gonna be times where the market is closed, but it will show you the days in which the market is open and what the close price is, which is what matters. The same concept applies to Y sheet. So again, we're gonna use the Y's price function, enter the ticker, the parameter again is gonna be the same. So it's gonna be close. It doesn't matter if it's capitalized or lowercase, that doesn't matter at all, so don't worry about that. And then here it's gonna ask me numbers to end and then start date and end date. So in this case, we're gonna leave the numbers to date uh, empty for now and you will see why in a second. And then the start date is this, the end date is here. Close the brackets. And as you can see, you will get very similar data right here. Uh, the cool thing is, and this is why I told you that we would wait to show you the numbers they end, is that sometimes you only want to get 
the data not between two specific date periods but let's say the last 20 days 30 days five days so that's something very easy that you can do so in this case we're going to select the last four days close the bracket and then the function will automatically update for you showing you the last four days of data as of the time that I'm recording this video. So this makes it very simple for you to get the data you're looking for. Now, because you made it to the end of the video, I wanna show you how to get historical stock data on your Google Sheets spreadsheet. So that's very simple. With Y Sheets, one of the simplest things that you can do is just enter any company ticker select annual or quarterly data and then you can choose from standardized or sec as reported financials which are in beta we recommend standardized financials because you can compare those financial results more easily across different companies and what's going to happen is that you're going to get the income statement which you can see right here formatted and everything i'm just going to zoom out so you see the numbers better a little bit there we go and as you can see it goes back many many years into the past and the same thing applies for the balance sheet the cash flow statement key metrics and financial growth metrics. Now, if you're looking to do more deeper analysis into a specific company and you don't wanna get all of the data at once, what you can do is use the WISE function, which you can see how it works here. And what's gonna happen is that you can build these models like this one that get you all these different data in all these different periods like TTM, 2020, blah, blah, blah. And then all you have to do is change the company ticker and all of this data will automatically update for you. There's two more things that I want to show you in terms of getting uh, stock data in Google Sheets. So one of them is with the wise price function. You can just enter a company ticker and then as an attribute enter dividend. And what's going to happen is that you're going to be able to see all the dividend payments that that particular company has made. Let me just adjust the formatting here so it looks better. And then from here, you're gonna be able to make any calculations you like. Another really helpful thing is that you can also get revenue breakdowns for specific companies. So in this case, we're gonna do Apple. This time we're gonna be using the WISE function because that's a different type of historical data point that we're looking to access. And then enter segment, revenues, Select the period that we want this data for. So in this case, we're gonna keep it uh, 2020, for example. And what's gonna happen is that we're gonna get a breakdown, as you can see right here. I'm just gonna space it out better. We're gonna get a breakdown of Apple's revenue in terms of its different business segments. So this is really valuable and the same thing is available for geographic segments so that you can also see where the company's revenues are coming from. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell on so you get notified every time we release a new video that's gonna show you how it is that you can become a better stock market investor. I'll see you in the next one.